Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God to let you know you can come confidently and boldly and draw near to the throne of grace that you may receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate help and well-timed help that God knows that you need coming just when you need it. God knows what you need. He knows everything that you need before you ask. And he loves you and he wants you as his, your heavenly father to come and hear from him and talk to him, to come to him first in all things great and small. The good news is God is always wanting to hear from you and speak to you. And he wants you to talk to him. He spent a great price to demonstrate his great love for you, to show that you can come boldly and confidently to him and speak to him about everything. He knows everything about your life. There's nothing hidden from him. He knows it from the beginning to the end. He knows every stage. He knows every decision, every word, everything that you'll say and speak. He knows all things about you, and he loves you. And he gave his son's life for you to draw you into a personal relationship with him so that you could have life with him for eternity. Listen. God is speaking to you constantly, but so often is that we miss out on hearing from him, but, or we don't understand what he's saying to us because we don't take time and spend time with him to hear him. It's just like spending time with a friend. You come and you spend time with your friend and you know the voice of your friend. I know when I was a child, I heard the voice of a good friend of mine, and he would holler all across the pasture, and I would come running because I knew it was time for dinner. Or I'd hear my mother's voice, and she would holler, and she could holler loud, but I knew her voice. And that's what he tells you. God, who is your father, tells you that you will know his voice. Jesus himself said, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. And you as a child of God know the voice of God. But if you're not listening, you won't hear it. You have to slow down. You have to stop what you're doing and deliberately and decide to hear from God. And the easiest way to do that is to get in his word. God tells you to come near to him and to come to him. And he will show you the things that you need. He is listening and wanting to hear from you because he wants you to have that personal relationship with him. God wants to transform you and your thoughts into the way that he thinks. He's given you the very mind of Christ to hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. He wants you to know how he thinks about certain things. But if you're plugging your brain and your mind and your soul with the things of this world, then you will be hard pressed to hear what God is saying because the voice of the world is speaking louder in your conscience than the voice of God because you don't know what God says. And the way to know what God says is to read his word, meditate on his word, get in his word. Because God created you for a close personal relationship with him. And he's actually done something very special for you. He's given you his word and he's written it down. And he's done it in many types of translations so that he can communicate through his spirit what he wants to say to you. A lot of times you may not understand the word of God if it's in a certain translation, but the spirit of God is not limited who wrote the word of God to use any translation to let you know what God prefers you to do and how to do it. He can apply the word of God to your heart and your mind the way that God wants it done because he's the one who gave it to the writers of old to write the scriptures themselves. He knows how to apply it to your life. God can take the word of God and apply it to you the way that God wants it applied to you. And you as a new creation in Christ Jesus, 
you're a new creature altogether. You've been born of the Spirit of God to hear from the Spirit of God what the Word of God is saying to you. Because the Spirit of God and the Word of God and God the Father and God the Son are all one. They don't say something different from each other. God designed you for a close personal relationship with Him. And he came to live in you and to be personally present with you so he could talk to you on a moment-by-moment basis. You are special to God. You need to hear that. You're special to God. God loves you. And he chose to bring you and draw you to himself through Christ Jesus to have a personal relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three in one, so that you can hear from God on a moment-by-moment basis on what he would have you to do. Even as I'm speaking to you, God is directing my thoughts and my ideas and my words to give you his word. He says that he'll give you what you need. That's what he tells you. But you have to be willing and obedient to have the courage to want to find out what he would direct you to do. But he gives you that power and desire to do it. The Holy Spirit in you, testifying with your own spirit, gives you the power and desire to want to do those things that please God. And he will stir you and keep you in God's way. Listen, if you're not doing what God would like you to do, you're unsettled. You don't have a peace about what you're doing. And when you don't have a peace, that's a sure sign that God's not in the direction that you're going. So the Lord himself tells you, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. But you have to come to God to find out what his plans are for you. If you're going to a trusted advisor, You're expecting him to give you good knowledge. But no matter what knowledge that trusted advisor gives you, it's finite. It's limited. But God's knowledge of what you need and the direction you need for your life is unlimited because he's infinitely transcending above all that you can ever possibly need or want or desire. And he knows all the answers before you even ask the questions. The Lord is constantly speaking to you. He tells you that. And he's wanting to give you the direction that you need. The problem isn't with the Lord. It's rather you not fixing your thoughts and mind on him to hear what he would have you say. That's what he tells you in Hebrews 12 too. Listen, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd who risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. That's what Jesus did for you to have this relationship with God so that you can have a personal moment-by-moment conversation with him if you choose to. He chooses to, so he makes the way. Jesus is the way that makes it available to you. Notice what he says. You can hear his voice, and his sheep know his voice. But most Christians usually question, is God speaking? The reason you can't discern what God's saying is because you're not tuned into his voice. When you tune into the voice of God, when you tune into the Spirit of God, that means you have to turn the channel on your radio station to to God's station and get it off the world station. God's always broadcast, but you're not always listening to his channel. You're listening to the world's channel. And Jesus says, fix your eyes on me, not the eyes of the world, and you will see that I will give you the guidance that you need. When you delight yourself in him, which means you fix your eyes on him and look to him, then he promises you something in Psalms 37 that you should remember. He will give you the desires of your heart. That's because your desires have become his desires. And when you want what he wants, he will give you the desires of your heart. There's four steps that you can really utilize to clearly hear the voice of God. Step one is this. 
You have to meditate. You have to think on, ponder the Word of God. It just means that you have to pay special attention to it. It means that you've got to take the time to read the Word of God and not just read it like a book. It may just be one verse. It may be that God brings you to Philippians 4, 6. He just says, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And you were having a struggle in your heart. And your mind was worrying about things. And God says, don't worry. Don't worry. Look to me. Stop worrying and start trusting, depending, and relying on me. And I will direct your path. That's what he prays you in Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That means trust in his word because his word and him are one. The Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God are the same. And his word does not change. It never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what God said, he will do. Because God's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he should tell a fib, because God knows what's going to happen. So he doesn't have to change his mind. He doesn't have to look to other things, because he knows the things that are going to happen. It also means that you have to sit still. You have to turn off the world and focus your eyes on the Word of God and ask Him to speak to you through His Spirit in His Word and sit quietly before Him, just as He tells you in Psalms 46.10. Joshua knew this, and he gave great instruction to Joshua, the Holy Spirit did. He said, don't let the book of this law depart from your mouth, but Meditate in it day and night so that you can observe what you should know to do and how you should do it according to all that's written therein. But then he makes a wonderful promise. When you meditate the word of God, God makes a promise in Joshua 1, 8 that you need to listen to. He says, then you will find your way is prosperous and you will have good success. So if you're looking to be prosperous and have good success and God do the direction in it, not the world, he says it's a simple task. Meditate on my word. Put my word into your heart and mind, and then you will see the direction you should go. Because literally, he's already written his word in your heart and mind because he lives in you. So when you read the word of God, the word of God in you, the very spirit of God in you testifies with your own spirit what the word of God is saying to you. And it's like a white, wonderful flag that says, yes, amen, this is what you should be doing. So as a born and begin believer, the word of God now living in you is the word of God that will give you the words that you need, when you need them, and how you need them, if you will look and seek Him. But if you're not looking for Him, you're not wanting to talk to Him, then you won't find Him. The second step is this. You have to practice the Word of God. You have to be a doer of the Word and not just a hearer. In step one, you may be meditating and you may be hearing the Word of God, But God says sometimes that you have to take action. You have to take action and be a doer of the word. Because it's the doer of the word that sees things happen. And if you're not a doer of the word, you're only here only. James 1.20 says, 1.22 says that you're deceiving yourself. This simply means that you act on the word of God. Because the Lord is constantly and continually in birthing in you faith. That's his divine persuasion from his word that comes by hearing his word. And that's what faith does. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as you hear the word of God, it can... It's confirmed by the Holy Spirit of God, the Word that's already in you, and it testifies with your own spirit what you should do and how you should do it. And it will give you the direction you need to know on what God prefers. Further, 
what God births in you, he also guarantees it'll come to pass. For example, he tells you, as we gave in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, make your requests made known unto God. Did you hear what he said? He says, don't be anxious, but pray about everything with thanksgiving and let your request be made known to God. See, you have to do something. You have to act on the word. First thing you have to do is don't be anxious. The second thing you have to do is you have to bring everything before the Father in the name of Jesus and pray about everything. And then you do it with thanksgiving because you know when you do what the Word of God says, the Word of God is going to become true in your life because God will keep his promise in his Word. Again, he says, Don't fret. Don't fret. So that means you have to stop fretting. He says, don't have anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance, in everything, he's telling you. You pray and you make a definite petition before God with thanksgiving. And you do it simply. Say, Lord, you know I really need direction in this situation. I really need your help here. I need you to provide this for me, whatever it is. And you say, thank you, Lord, for providing it, whatever it may be. And then you don't worry about how he's going to do it. You do your worrying about how you're going to say it. And all that means is, are you going to say it? Are you going to be a doer? The only worry you have here is, are you going to do what God says? Or are you not going to do what God says? And to overcome that worry is stop worrying and start trusting. I start doing what God says. He says, stop fretting. Stop being anxious. And in everything, pray with thanksgiving. And let me know what it is you need. You're not doing that because God needs to know. You're doing it because you need to know that by letting God know what you need, that it's him when he brings it to pass that brought it to you, and it wasn't yourself. Step three, you give the word of God first place in your life. He tells you in Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, he says, My son, my daughter, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. You hear what he tells you? He says, will it not only keep you from worrying, but he says it will be healing and health to all your flesh. But you have to keep your eyes on the word of God and not the world around you. That means you always put the word of God first place. You ask what God says about the situation. And you ask God to direct you in his word through his Holy Spirit, what he would have you to do. And then the Holy Spirit of God will stir you to come across a verse in your Bible. Or it may be a verse on a wall somewhere you're walking. Or it may be in a bumper sticker. It's been in all those places for me. And God gives you that word that you need. It may be in a song. It may be in a talk show that you're hearing, but God will bring his word to you that you need to hear so that you can act on his word. And then that word of God that you act on is coming to you by the Holy Spirit who's revealing to you what he's telling you that God is telling you he wants you to do. And then when he does and you act on it, you can do so knowing that God's guaranteeing that he's with you, guiding you, and directing that he will bring it to pass. He tells you, my word that goes forth out of my mouth, that means the word that he's revealing to you, it won't return to me void, he says. And what he's talking about is that it won't return void, meaning that it's going to produce the effect that he intended it to do. It's going to accomplish what he pleased and what he purposed when he wrote it, when he knew that you would actually be using it in your situation circumstance. It's going to prosper, he says, in 
thing that it was sent to do because the word of God will never fail for nothing is impossible with God. This is because the word of God, he tells you in Hebrews 4.12, is alive and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword for cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. That means it's going to expose your innermost thoughts and desires to see if you're trusting God or trusting yourself or looking to the world for your answers. When you stop looking to the world and trusting in yourself and look to God, you'll get the answer that's the absolute best. And it will turn out better than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine because God is in it and he's directing the direction of your life and what you should do. The fourth one, the last step, is to act on the Word of God with authority. That means that when you use the Word of God and you act on the Word of God and you become a doer of the Word of God, you recognize that the Word of God is more than just the words on a page. It's literally, as he tells you in Ephesians 6, 7, it's the sword of the Spirit. It's the sword that the Holy Spirit of God uses to bring down strongholds, to take out authorities, and to do greater than you can even think, hope, ask, or match. The Spirit of God himself draws you to the word of his promise. The Spirit and power of God operating on you stir your mind's most holy emotions, and then they just persuade you. As he says in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, that means that they regulate your life and conduct your life by the effective working of the Holy Spirit in you, testifying with your own spirit what God would have you to do. Thus, you now walk by faith, God divinely persuading you and not by sight, so that you can know what God prefers. And then he reveals to you what you need to do. And he tells you this is true as a born-again believer because your spirit was reborn. And then he tells you in 1 Corinthians 2.11 and Proverbs 20.27 that the spirit of man, that factor in you, in your human personality, and in your mind, in your emotion that proceeds immediately from God, is the lamp of the Word of God, the lamp of the Lord Himself, that searches all your innermost parts. And because you're filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God Himself reveals to you what He would have you to do. So you hear the voice of God, and you act on God's Word with authority as a born-again believer, knowing that you are indwelt by the Spirit of the living God, The Word of God Himself lives in you, and the Word that He reveals to you will be accomplished for you by His working of His mighty power and not yourself. He tells you, I recognize when you're weak, and when you're weak, that's when my grace is sufficient for you, because when you're weak, then I show myself to be the strongest in your life. So you have no excuse not to act on the Word of God, Because it's the power of God in you that's causing it to be effective in your life and accomplish what it says it'll do. For you're not living the life of the flesh. You're living the life of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God really does dwell in you. And He directs and controls you because you belong to Christ and you're truly a child of God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit so that you can know what God would have you to do. There's many times that God's going to speak to you. And even now, as I've been talking, God has been speaking to you. And the words that I've given to you, his words, the scriptures that have been given in this broadcast, they will reveal to you what God would have you to do. And then he's going to lead you to other scriptures that you may know his absolute best and so that you can trust and rely and depend on him and not yourself and look to him and not the world 
and know that God will take care of you and speak to you. And you can hear from him as you tune in to his channel and tune out the world in Jesus name. Now, Father, I just thank you for all these who are listening. I hear the hurting hearts. You reveal to me those who are seeking you right now. They're wanting to hear from you, Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you reveal to them that word they need to hear, that you would draw them to your word, whether it's in a Bible, a broadcast, a word on a sign, whatever it is. Reveal your word and cause their hearts to be encouraged and uplifted and give them that direction that they need in Jesus' name. For I know that greater are you that's in us than he is in the world. And you wish above all things that we should prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. So to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask, think, hope, or imagine. To you be glory who accomplishes in us and through us and for us. Greater than we can even think, hope, ask, or imagine. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.